Hi readers. I'm going to start off today's lesson by telling you a story. And that story is about me as a teenager. When I was 16, and I just got my driver's license. My mom and dad let me go to the mall by myself. And I drove myself to the mall. I got out of my car. I ran into the mall. I shopped for about three hours. And then when it was time for me to leave, I kind of froze because I couldn't remember where I parked my car. Hmm. So I sort of panicked a little bit because this was my first time out on my own and I was in a really big mall in Atlanta and um, I had to stop myself and I thought, okay, let's think about where you parked when you arrived at the mall. What did you see when you parked? So I had to kind of take a step back and remember when I drove in, a new Belks was right in front of me and I was so excited to be there that I just pulled and I know I parked in front of Belks. So I started walking down to Belks and when I got there, when I was walking through the cosmetics and the perfume and all of that right there, when you walk in from the mall, I noticed an escalator. And I was like, oh my gosh, I remember that escalator. Um, and so I knew that when I walked in the door, that I looked up and the escalator was right in front of me. So I thought to myself, okay, if you put your back to the escalator and start walking, that's going to be where you came from. So I started to walk in the opposite direction of the escalator. And I saw the handbags there on the left. And I saw this handbag that really caught my attention because I love purses now. And um, then I remembered, oh my gosh, I remember seeing this handbag when I walked in thinking I had to have it. So I knew that this had to be where I was parked. So I walked on out the door and sure enough, there was my car and I had made it back. Now, I'll tell you that um, I had to stop and think. I had to think about my own thinking. So I know you're wondering, what in the world does this story have to do with reading? But readers, today I'm going to teach you that good readers are constantly thinking about their own thinking. And we have a term for this and it's called metacognition. So just like I demonstrated to you, if we don't think about our thinking, we won't learn from our mistakes or from our successes. We'll always have to start from scratch when we face a problem. By using metacognition though, we'll be able to more effectively apply what we learn now to the future. So the way that holds true is, I promise you, I don't get lost at a mall anymore. I take note of where I park and that's from my prior experience. I'm using my metacognition. I'm learning from my past mistakes. So. Watch me do this work with our text today. Let me tell you one thing that I know good readers do. Good readers annotate the text. Now, we can do that by writing on the book if we own it or if it's on a sheet of paper that we're allowed to write on, or we can use the sticky notes, or if we're reading an online text, we can use um, a program that's an annotation program. For instance, when you open up your Google Docs, you'll be able to open up a PDF with um, Cami, which is an annotation program. And so that'll allow you to annotate the text just like you're gonna see me doing on this paper. So my point is that the question is not if, we're gonna annotate the text. Because I promise you, we're gonna annotate text all year long. It's something that all good readers do. But the question is, how will we annotate text? 
So I want you to open up your reader's notebook and start on a new page where we are going to put our um, anchor chart for today. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to write on the top of your page, I have a blank sheet of paper here, I'd like you to write one, let's see, one way to annotate Okay, so we're gonna start with that. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to scan the text and ask. We're gonna ask, what do I notice? So that's the first thing we're gonna do. So let's do that. We're gonna do that with our text that we're gonna to read today. It is by um, lyrics by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, and it is called Wings. And so what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scan the text. And I'm gonna ask myself, what are some things that I notice? So I'm gonna start at the top, and as I'm scanning, I'm noticing that I see the word I a whole lot of times. I see I was seven, I stepped, I was, I hit, I touched, I jumped, I swear. Oh man, this is full of eyes. So the first thing I noticed, I'm gonna come over here and write, I'm gonna write I, noticed okay the first thing i noticed is um the use of the word i so i equals now when i see the word i in a text i know that that's told from the first person point of view and that means the narrator is the speaker so this must be a personal narrative personal narratives are about someone's life And um, I think that when I continue to read, I'm gonna wanna think about how the story goes. I know it's gonna be about someone's life. Okay, so let me keep, let me keep going through and see what kind of things I notice. Um, so I'm going to make a little list here of vocabulary words that I come across. So as I'm scanning, I'm noticing words like backcourt, um, net, um, I'm seeing let's see what else? Jump shot, jump shot. Um, rim, okay, so the things I see are words like, hmm, well, I see backcourt, I see jumped, that's a verb, um, net, Jump shot was at the very end. Now, you know what I'm starting to wonder? I'm starting to wonder, is this gonna be about basketball? Because I know that these are all basketball terms. So is this 
going to be about basketball. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let me keep looking. See what else I notice. Um, touch the net that mesh stuff in. Um, oh, huh. Well, this is interesting. There's the word dope there. Um, and then, oh, clown. Huh. That's an odd place to use a clown as like a circus. How does that fit in with basketball? Unless it's a slang word. Hmm. I think I'm going to jot that down. So I think I've got some slang words because I know that dope is slang. And I know that clown can be slang. Um, let's see what else I notice. Hmm. Oh, kicks. Hey, that's a slang word for shoes. And huh, not tight. You know, tight, not tight. So not tight is also a slang word. All right. So I think I've got some pretty good ideas going now. Um, about things that I noticed just in my skimming and scanning. Now, the next thing we're going to do when we go to annotate, our number two step is, so get back out your chart, and we're going to think about the title and what does it mean. So, think about the title, and you need to be writing this down. Um, what does it mean? What does it mean? Think about the title and what does it mean? And we're going to do just that right now. All right. So as I'm looking back, I'm noticing that the title of this is Wings. And I need to think. What in the world, what does wings have to do with this text? Have to, oh, you can't see. Have to do with this text. All right, so what do I know about wings? Well, what do I know? What do I know? All right. Well, what do I know about wings? So I know that wings um, are on birds. I know they're on birds. Wings help you fly. Um, you need air. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I know. Oh, um, I know that sometimes wings mean freedom. So wings can be a metaphor for freedom. All right. So do you see how I did that? Do you see how I, I got all of this information just by reading the title. And you can do that too, every time you read a book. Okay, so before we move on to the rest, I'm going to do two more points with you on things I'd like you to do whenever we're annotating text. And they are, the third thing I want you to do when you annotate text is, and we're gonna do this next, is we're going to read a chunk, read a chunk, and ask. We're going to ask ourselves, what is this text telling me?
What is the text telling me? What is the text telling me? I'm going to read a chunk. Then the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to fourth jot down our thoughts and our questions. So we're going to have some questions when we start reading. Jot down your thoughts and questions. Jot down your thoughts and questions. Okay? So I'm going to give you a moment to get those two written down, and then we're going to read our lyrics that go with wings. All right, so just a reminder, we're thinking about our thinking. And so I'm going to model this metacognition for you, how we are going to go about reading this text. So I'm just going to think out loud, and I'm going to jot what comes to my mind as I'm reading this. So here we go. I was seven years old when I got my first pair. Okay, so first off the bat, I know that this was a flashback. So that means the narrator is older than seven. Um, and we know that flashbacks too are kind of a, he's like looking back, it's hindsight, things that he, things that he saw. And have you ever heard the phrase hindsight's 2020 at, when you look back on things, you realize how they really were and how they could have been different. So we're going to call this hindsight. It's, that's what he's doing. He's looking back. It's a flashback. All right. And I stepped outside and I was like, Mama, this air bubble right here, it's going to make me fly. I hit back court. And when I jumped, I jumped. I swear I got so high. I touched the net, Mom. I touched the net. This is the best day of my life. Oof, all right. Well, this, he is very excited. For sure. Um, but I'm also thinking right here, does he really think these shoes are going to make him jump higher? This is my wondering. Does he think... I'm going to write this over on the side. Does he think these shoes will make him jump higher? And can a seven-year-old touch the net? Really? Oh, my. I'm just not so sure about that. Touch the net. Can a seven-year-old? Really? Can a seven-year-old touch net? He's got to be exaggerating. That just, I, I don't know very many seven-year-olds that can jump up and touch the net. Um, all right, so let me keep reading. Air Maxes were next. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I know that Air Max is a type of shoe. So um, let's say I'm thinking, are you kidding me? Another pair of shoes? Air Maxes were next. I'm going to say another pair of shoes. How many pairs does one boy need? So I'm wondering how much time has passed between these two. Hmm. All right. Well, let's keep reading. That air bubble, that mesh, the box, the smell, the stuff and the tread. In school, I was so cool. Huh. 
Does he think these shoes made him cool? I was so cool. Hmm. I'm going to say, does he think shoes make you cool? Does he think shoes make you cool? Well, you know, I know too that Air Maxes are kind of expensive. So if he's now on his second pair of shoes, I wonder if his family might be rich. I, I, I'm gonna jot that down just cause I'm not sure. I'm gonna say, is he rich? Could be, hmm, I don't know. Um, but it's something to think about. So I'm gonna keep reading. I knew that I couldn't crease them. My friends couldn't afford them. Whoa, 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 man. My friends couldn't afford them. That is arrogant. I'm going to write that. Arrogant. You know what arrogant means. Arrogant means he thinks he's better than someone else. His friends couldn't afford them. That seems really arrogant. Um, four stripes, some Adidas, more shoes, Air Adidas. I'm going to put more shoes. So what are we on our third pair of shoes? How much time has passed? I'm really, um, wondering, is he going through four pairs of shoes that fast? How much time has passed? On the court, I wasn't the best. Mm. So, but my kicks were like the pros. Huh, so I'm actually gonna change colors because I want this to kind of stand out. He has a perception of himself. Um, he knows he's not a good basketball player. Like he knows he's not the best, even though he's got these shoes, because when he first got those pair of shoes, he thought they made him the best, but now he knows. Um, but his kicks, which we know kicks, I'm going to write over here. I'm going to write shoes, but his kicks were like the pros. So he wasn't a good player, but he had great shoes. All right. Yo. Oh, there's another slang word. I'm going to jot that down here. Is that slang? Yo, I stick out my tongue so everyone could see that logo. That seems kind of braggy. He's really bragging. That kind of goes along with this arrogant part right here. Arrogant, bragging. He sticks out his tongue. He wants everybody to know what shoes he's got on. Nike Air Flight. Oh my goodness. Are we got another pair of shoes? Nike Air Flight. Now we're on another pair of shoes. So now we're on like four pairs, but bad was so dope. And then my friend Carlos's brother got murdered for his fours. Whoa. All right. Um, this caught my attention right here and I'm going to squiggle like this because we go from being I'm just gonna write, wow, what just happened? Um, oh, A-P-E-N-E-D, <laughs> what just happened? So something just happened because 
all up here, we're all like at the very top, he's starting all happy and he's like excited. And then here in the middle, he's kind of arrogant. And even though he knows he's not the best player, and then all of a sudden, his friend's brother gets murdered. So he's talking about murder after all of this happiness. This was a mood change for sure. I mean, we went from happy to like, ooh, really quick. See, he just wanted a jump shot, but they wanted to start a cult though. So yeah, um, I'm thinking that the kid's brother, he just wanted to be a basketball player, but the people that murdered him, um, a cult is another word I know for a gang. So I think what that's telling me is um, that he got killed for his shoes by some gang members. Hmm. Don't want to get caught from Janice Park to Othello. So I think this Janice Park to Othello, I'm thinking these might be um, streets. Are these streets? street names like how he's not supposed to go between certain blocks i'm thinking those might be street names um you can clown for those probings with the velcro those were not tight hmm not tight means not cool not cool i'm gonna write that over there next to my not tight is not cool um, I was trying to fly without leaving the ground because I wanted to be like Mike. All right, hmm, now we're going back here. I wanted to be like Mike. So I know Mike, I know a Mike that goes with basketball is Michael Jordan. So is he talking about Michael Jordan, I know Michael Jordan is a phenomenal basketball player. So I'm thinking maybe this is an illusion. He's alluding to he wanted to be like Mike. That's a, that's one of the catchphrases, be like Mike. Um, hmm, interesting. Um, So I wanted to be him. I wanted to be that guy. I wanted to touch the rim. I wanted to be cool and I wanted to fit in. I wanted what he had. All right, so what's really standing out to me right here is the way that the narrator uses the words I wanted over and over and over again. That repetition means it's, it's important. It's strong language. So I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, wanted. So I know here he wants to fit in. Um, and be cool. He wants to fit in and be cool. Um, hmm. But the last thing here that really stands out to me is this word right here, America. Why would the author use this word? Why would he name out America? I'm gonna write over here, I'm gonna say America. Does he want our attention? Does he want us to hear his message? I wonder if he's getting ready to give us a message. Hmm. All right. So let's think about that for a minute. 
All right, so we're moving down to the um, chorus. Um, and remember that in a song, a chorus is repeated over and over. And so um, we're going to read this chorus and we're going to kind of tear it apart just like um, we did the top part. So it starts with, I want to fly. Can you take me far away? Give me a star to reach for. Tell me what it takes and I'll go so high. I'll go so high. My feet won't touch the ground. Hmm. All right. So I'm going to think about this right here, this part right here, because I've got some thoughts. Um, I'm thinking that these are dreams. He's got dreams. Um, this is, we went from what he wants. Now we're going to all positive. Um, he looks like he's willing to work. Um, he's willing, he is willing to work hard because he says, tell me what it takes and I'll go so high. So give him a star to reach for. He's setting goals. He wants, he wants to do what it takes. But I have a question about that. I'm wondering if, so this is going to be my wonder. I wonder, um, would it be satisfied? with normal. Would it be satisfied with normal? Um, or if he has to be a superstar? Or does he need to be? like Michael Jordan. And then my other question is, does he just have to be a superstar in basketball? Or does he just want to stand out? Um, basketball only? Hmm. All right, well, let's read this last little bit. Stitch my wings and pull the strings. I bought these dreams that all fall down. Ooh, stitch my wings. So this part right here sounds negative. The whole part right there sounds negative. Um, so we were positive. Tell me what it takes. You know, I'll work hard for it. And then all of a sudden, we're saying stitch my wings and pull the strings. Um, stitch my wings. Hmm. I bought these dreams. Can you buy dreams? Can you buy dreams? Remember when I was talking about if he had money back up at the top, if he was rich because of his shoes? I'm wondering, who's he buying dreams from? Hmm. And when you talk about pulling strings, when I think of pulling strings, I think about a puppet. Puppet? Is he a puppet for someone? Um, meaning something's controlling you. What's controlling him? Is it the money? Is it the need to be special? Is it the need to be a superstar? What's controlling him? Um, 
is he talking about the, oh, oh, what if he's talking about the shoes being in control? Is he talking about the shoes? Is he talking about the shoes being in control? Because you know, through the beginning, that's all he talked about was the shoes and everything that the shoes meant and um, what the shoes gave him. But shoes can't control anything. They're an inanimate object. Um, so that's really interesting. Hmm. Something to think about for when I go to look at the next verse. So did you see what I just did? Now, you know, when we started with this, this was page was blank. So all of this was my thinking as I was reading. Now, what I'd like you to do is you're going to look at the second stanza, which is right here. And I want you to do to the second stanza exactly what I did to the first. So you're gonna practice what you learned. Um, and I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes for that. Okay, you should have paused the video and given yourself some time to annotate verse two. Now I'd like you to pause the video again and annotate the third verse. So take a few minutes to do that. And remember, you're thinking about what you're thinking as you're reading. And sometimes that's really hard to do and it helps to talk out loud to yourself. So go ahead and try that with verse three. All right, so hopefully you finished annotating and you got to the end because the end is very interesting. Um, if we look at how we know stories go, we know that there's usually a change in the character. How does that last line, the last line of, um, and now I see it's just another pair of shoes. How does that last line represent change? Think about what I worked through at the very beginning when he was younger and um, getting going through all those pairs of shoes. And now he sees that it's just another pair of shoes. That what, how does that represent change? Now, how does that change help us learn a lesson? Because the author is wanting to teach us a lesson. What lesson does the author want to teach us? Think about that. Think about that last line and how that represents change. So when we think about a lesson, we think about a theme. A theme is the lesson that the author wants to teach you. What you think the theme is of this text is like, what is the lesson the author wants us to learn? And what textual evidence can you provide to support your idea? So what I'd like you to do now is to write what you think the theme is and provide at least three pieces of textual evidence to support that theme. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to do that, so go ahead and pause the video. All right, so we think about our thinking all day long in order to adjust and grow. In this session, should have made you even more aware of why this is an important strategy to add to all aspects of your life. The more you analyze your actions, your reading, your words, the more you grow. Your reading work will be full of annotations and thinking this year. Thinking deeply is an important step in improving our reading. Today, I want you to practice this way of thinking. As you move into your independent reading, I want you to jot down some of your ideas, some of your questions, some of the concerns you have about your book. 
So when you go off to read today, you need to make sure that you're taking some of this that you learned today about metacognition and thinking about your thinking and applying it to your reading. Have a great day, readers.